Welcome back to the WHTC Morning News for this Monday, May the 25th. We want to have talk at the town today. We're having a special CBS News Radio program about Memorial Day with Gil Gross from 9 until noon. Fourth Monday of the month, we are normally joined on Talk of the Town by State Representative Brad Slaw, first-term Republican from Zeeland Township, the former Ottawa County Treasurer. He's been gracious enough to join us on WHTC Morning News and a Zoom connection, and he's on the other end of our connection as we speak. Brad, good morning and welcome back to WHTC. Good morning, Gary. Thanks for having me on this morning. Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And again, thank you very much for uh, joining us a little bit earlier than the usual scheduled time to be able to uh, uh, answer some questions from us and some questions from you. We'll have uh, about uh, 15 minutes of conversation with Brad at 395-1450-395-1450. Dismayed? Surprised? Not surprised over the reports we've been getting that people, frankly, are not following social distancing and some of the safeguards, uh, heading the beaches, and uh, some, in some cases, acting as if COVID-19 never really happened. I guess, Gary, I'm not surprised. Um, I think that uh, folks went into this whole process of uh, COVID-19 um, saying, okay, we are going to flatten the curve. We really, truly believe this is an important thing. Um, I believe that uh, many of those folks feel like, okay, we've flattened the curve. We did that. The hospitals are in good shape. <clears throat> Probably we're all going to get the disease, the virus at some point in time. Um, as long as the hospitals are okay, then we're probably okay. So I think there's a bunch of folks out there with that kind of a mindset um, that are that we've seen um, on beaches and doing those kinds of things. And, of course, the concerns about a second wave is what has led many to say, um, got to keep the, the, the uh, restraints in place. But uh, you and other members of uh, the Ottawa County delegation to the legislature, Jim Lilly and Luke Meerman in the House and Roger Victory in the Senate, have uh, told Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Ottawa County is ready to reopen. This was written almost uh, a week or so ago, but uh, it has not happened yet, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen until the middle of June at the earliest. Again, not surprised, but then again, disappointed too about this. Yeah, I guess I'm not surprised. And I think, you know, it's really important that I, that as part of that memo, we believe that we can do it with safeguards put in place. So do I think that every church ought to reopen and every member ought to come back to worship all at once? The answer is no, I really don't. I think we need to be smart about how we do this. There is social distancing. I think there's some of that that we found. There is, I've seen way more people washing hands and cleaning things than I did before this happened. I think there's some great things that have come out of this from a health perspective and overall health perspective for our communities. Um, and so I just, I would encourage people to do those things and to do them smartly rather than just flat out, okay, we're going to hug everybody and we're going to cough in people's faces and whatever else. I, we can be way smarter than that. And we can, I think, open up effectively. Um, it's, it damages businesses for us. It damages pe people's lives by not being open. Is it a case maybe more than anything else? And this is an opinion I have, and whether, whether or not I'm up, you know what, without a paddle on this, I don't know. But uh, is it a case perhaps that Ottawa County's fate is tied to maybe what is going on in Kent County or in Muskegon County because of the fact that there's more people there and say, hey, Ottawa County opens, but Kent County and Muskegon County doesn't, and people are going to start flocking here because of the, of the you know, we're free, we're free. Uh, right. Is it a case that perhaps we're sort of caught because of the, where we're located more than anything else? Yeah, we are um, in a zone or a graphic that the based on health department or other kinds of things have tied us to Kent County directly. And so, yeah, we are um, looking at Kent County as part of that piece and it's the biggest number of people and they've got the um, a, a higher number of things going, cases going on and deaths going on. So we are being tied to them, absolutely. 
If you have a question for State Representative Brad Slaw, he'll take it at 395-1450, 395-1450. Some of the numbers of those who have been afflicted in other states have been called into question as to their uh, authenticity, reliability. Uh, how a concern are you that maybe Michigan's numbers might be overinflated or perhaps even underinflated? How, how, how confident are you about what you are getting the numbers from not only Ottawa County, but also the, the rest of the state? I think, you know, one of the interesting things is I've, I've gone to the Department of Health and Human Services website. They give a monthly, uh, a total of month by month. So you can actually get a, look at a comparison for 2019 to 2020, month by month totals. Um, and we're up total deaths in the state, um, probably by more than the 5,000 that, that um, they're saying was COVID related. But if you look at the total COVID number of deaths through April or March and April, they're only up about 3,000. So I'm not really sure, did it, did because we locked people up and put people in places where that kind of thing was happening, did we actually cause more deaths from some of the other things, heart disease, other kinds of things that are on that list as well, um, which have gone up over those two months? It's an interesting, an interesting study. Um, we, We've not gotten very uh, solid numbers from the health department for hospitalizations, for other kinds of things. We've asked for it continuously, and it's not been forthcoming. So I'm a little uh, concerned about numbers. You're talking about the state health department and the county in, yeah. the, in that regard? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, by the way, if you have a question for Brad Slaw, State Representative from Zeeland Township, uh, he'll be happy to take it at 395 1450 395-1450. Last Friday, Governor Whitmer announced that she's extending the Safer at Home executive order through uh, mid-June and the emergency order, um, emergency orders, I should say, through, uh, again, pretty much mid-June. Uh, since uh, last we chatted, the legislature had filed a lawsuit against the governor challenging her authority to continue these orders. And a state court of claims ruled that the governor had the authority under the 1945 law, but did not have that under the 1976 legislation. The legislature is going to continue its uh, uh, efforts and hope to have the state Supreme Court take the case up directly instead of having it go through the Court of Appeals. Some might say it is just mm, a, a wasteful exercise more than anything else. Others say it's the principle of the matter and maybe the establish some guidelines for down in the future what what in what camp are you more more into right now brad i'm definitely into the camp that this is an important thing to understand what um what is the the balance of power that the constitution calls for it calls for a really a balanced part judiciary legislative and executive and in the case that we're in right now um the based on um even if you were to read some of the dockets from the court case, the judge asked this question continuously is, so under the 1945 act, you believe that the governor could maintain a, um, an emergency declaration from now until she is done with her term in office? And the answer has to be yes, because that's the way it's written. Um, even though the, the governor's attorney argued that that wouldn't happen because we'd have to prove that that there are, it says that you're supposed to be able to show it by numbers, um, and so the, they would not do it. But the answer is the governor could maintain this forever, and it's not, that's just not a healthy thing. We really need the legislature to be able to be involved. It's the voice of the people. The voice of the people are not being heard um, on, a, on a regular basis in Lansing right now. Some might say change the law. That's easier said than done, especially in divided government. And frankly, and this is the thing I've been saying, if the people want this thing to change, they're going to have to change it themselves because uh, uh, any law proposed by the people through a petition cannot be vetoed by the governor. We saw that under the Snyder administration. This might be the way to go to maybe make the amendments on the 1945 law. And I would totally agree with that. The, if the people rise up and say, you know what, this is really important to us, um, I th we I think they could make it happen, and it would allow the legislatures to just vote on it by a, a, just a simple majority. 
395-1450. I have a couple of more minutes left with State Representative Brad Slob. As a man who knows numbers, the former Ottawa County Treasurer, this next subject certainly is uh, up your alley. The big concern right now, the budget shortfall. It's, uh, it is it is substantial. We're looking at uh, 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 $3 billion uh, from the last estimate for the rest of this year and another $3 billion or so for next year. That's just rounding out the figures. Some say the legislature needs to get into acts on this uh, meeting Im- immediately, immediately uh, to get this taken care of. Uh, can you express the sense of urgency there is right now about dealing with the budget because of the fact that these shortfalls mostly due to the uh, uh, COVID-19 situation? Yeah, so because we have not been spending money, because there are no taxes being generated in businesses and that kind of stuff, um, gas taxes are down, sales taxes are down, uh, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to see an impact on schools and local government units um, as they don't get the funds funding that they're used to getting. Um, that three billion, north of $3 billion for this year needs to be cut and we've only got roughly six months to take care of that. Um, so how do you cut what's gotta be paid out over the next six months and where does that come from? And there's all kinds of discrepancies about that. One of the interesting things is the, um, when a, de- a deficit is gonna be discovered, the the treasurer, the Department of Treasury is supposed to communicate that to the governor. The governor is supposed to communicate that to the legislature. At this point in time, that's not happened. It's an interesting thought. Uh, we're, is it because we really aren't in deficit or we aren't really sure what, what that should mean to us? The uh, revenue co- estimating conference happened a week and a half ago. It will, they've decided they really need a second one. Normally it would ne- the next one would be January. This time they're actually going to do it in August or early September uh, to give it, because it will be after some of the tax bills are due. So we'll have a better idea of what's paid and what's not. Um, yeah, we've, we've got some real concerns about where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. And we've asked the governor to give us a new budget based on um, the changes that have been made. Yeah, and not only those changes that have been made, Brad, but also some of the other things that are going on. And, you know, if somebody wants to be the governor of the state of Michigan, you got to be able to multitask and deal with not only COVID-19 and the Midland situation, but also the budget situation as well. And uh, also the... Um, uh, uh, censoring oneself on Twitter, and we saw that from Governor uh, uh, Whitmer uh, this past week. One final thing, um, um, I got the mask. In fact, company supplied me with one. I got one in the car as well. Thank you, Zealand Community Hospital, for that. Uh, what about you? You mask? <laughs> um, you know what? When I walk into a store, the answer is, yeah, I'm doing that right now. I, I truly believe that it's something that is important for folks. Do I wear one when I'm walking down the street? The answer is no, I just don't. Um, for two reasons. One is at this point in time, I'm not sick, so I'm not projecting something that would be virus. And I'm really not worried about catching it, especially in the sunlight and in the warmth. That's the things that they've told us are, are things that actually help to kill the virus. So I'm, I'm not concerned about it in those kind of situations. I try and really distancing, that six foot distancing piece is really as a big deal. I think that's an important piece. State Representative Brad Slaw joins us every month on WHTC's Talk of the Town to talk about some of the issues going on in Lansing because we don't have Talk of the Town today. Uh, He's joining us on WHTC Morning News. Brad, we appreciate your time. We thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to chatting with you again, if not in person, via the Zoom connection uh, uh, next month as well on Talk of the Town. Brad, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me in today. Appreciate uh, being here on Memorial Day, and we're, I'm really thankful for the folks who've blessed us by giving their all for our freedoms in our country. State Representative Brad Slaw, 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.